Okay, in this talk, we're going to try to illustrate with some examples what it means to say that all digital data are bits. Let's start with the example of, from the video that you just saw of the spaceship represented using a compression technique known as run length encoding, or RLE for short. The way this works is in each row of this 16 by 16 matrix, we're going to first say how many white bits there are, and then whenever we change to black bits, we'll list the number of black bits. So in row 1, there's 16 white bits. In row 2, there's 12 white bits. Then we change to 3 black bits and then back to 1 white bit. In row 3, we start with 10 white bits, 5 black bits, 1 white bit and so forth. Run length encoding, RLE, is an example of lossless compression. It's good for images with lots of white space, like this one. It's good for, for example, fax images. It's used in bitmaps. It's an example of lossless compression, which means that if you use it, you can get the original image back perfectly. No data are lost. It's good, therefore, for medical and archival images, important images. It's contrasted with lossy data compression, where some data may be lost during the compression process. Well, that's okay for lots of images that we use, such as camera images, where the lost data can't even be perceived by the human eye. Well, JPEG is an example of uh, lossy image compression. So, okay, we're doing compression. Let's ask how much data is required to do this. So on the left, we have our compressed data, and on the right, we have our original image. The original image is 256 pixels because it's a 16 by 16 array. And on the left, we have 62 numbers. It's how much compression is going on here. Well, it depends. Uh, among other things, it depends on how many bits are we using for each pixel in the image. The one way we could do this image, it's black and white after all, is we could use one bit per pixel. This would be what's called a monochrome image. And this was an old technique used in the 1960s when our computer screens could really only handle two colors. If we do things this way, then 256 pixels would require 256 bits. And this is what it would look like when we transfer the whites and blacks to ones and zeros, respectively. So we let the bit 1 be white and the bit 0 be black. So how much data does that technique require? All right, well, our original image has 256 pixels. Each one takes one bit. That's 256 bits. Our compressed image has 62 numbers. But to represent numbers like 16, we need at least 5 bits. And really, we want to be able to have bigger images than this. So we may have runs of 100 or so uh, white or black pixels. Let's just say we need 8 bits per number. That would require 496 bits for this image which is more than the original image itself. So that's not a very good compression result. Our file actually got bigger instead of smaller. But most images these days are not black and white. So let's look at an, another old technique, a 1980s technique, where we would use 8 bits per color. And colors are represented by mixing red, blue, and green hues to make the final color. If we have 8 bits per pixel, then one way to do this would be let the first three bits be used for the red hue, the th next three for the green, and the next two for the blue. That should be two. If you actually put ones in the red and nothing, zeros in the green and ones in the blue, you'd end up with a sort of uh, magenta color. But in this case, um, zero is still going to represent black, and ones, all ones in each bit, are gonna, is going to represent white. And in decimal, that's 255. So to represent a colored image, however, we can't use the simple scheme we had above. And the reason is there aren't just two colors. So we need to actually say what color we're changing to when we make a transition from white to black or white to red or red to green and so forth. So we need two numbers per color, one for the color and one for the run, how many for example, in the first row, we have 16 white pixels, so we encode it as 255, 16. In the second row, we have 12 whites, followed by 3 blacks, followed by 1 white. So it's 255, 12, 0, which is black, 3 blacks, and then 1 white, and so forth. So basically, we need twice as many numbers, two numbers for each run now, rather than one number for each run as we had in the original scheme. 
since the numbers are still 8 bits, that's 992 bits now. So, okay, how much data does our new scheme require? Well, the original image now has 256 pixels still, but each pixel now is represented by 8 bits because it could be a color. So that's 2048 bits. Our com compressed image has 124 numbers, 8 bits per number, which is only 992 bits. So, yay, we've got some good compression here, better than 50%. The file went from over 2,000 bits to less than 1,000 bits. So that's a pretty good result. If we move that to one step further up to sort of modern color representations, which are 24 bit, we can get an even better result. So we still use the red, green, and blue mixture to create our colors, but now we use 24 bits per pixel. Eight reds, eight greens, and eight blue bits. That gives us a total of 16 million colors, two to the 24th which is more than the eye can see, which is why some compression techniques are able to reduce the size of the file without really it being noticeable that some data are lost. In any case, now when we use run length encoding, we're gonna need three numbers for each pixel because we need to represent the RGB and then the number of pixels in the run. 000, zero, zero will be black, 255, 255, 255 will be white. And this color here might be represented by 255, 0, 200. So let's see how this works. So we have four times as many numbers now. So we have 248 numbers, and they look like this. In the first row, we have white. So that's 255, 255, 255, and there's 16 of them. In the second row, we have 12 whites. So 255, 255, 255, and 12, followed by three blacks, followed by one white and so forth. How do we do this time when we compress? Well, our original image is still 256 pixels, but now it's 24 bits per pixel, which comes to over 6,000 bits. The compressed image is 248 numbers, eight bits per number still, which gives us 1,984 bits, much less than 6,000. So now, in fact, we're getting better than 70% reduction which is very good. Okay, but to sum up, what does the amount of RLE compression depend on? Well, it depends, as we've seen, on the number of bits per pixel. But even more importantly, and this is something that the previous examples didn't show, it depends on the number of different colors in the image. Look at these two images. Regardless of how many bits we use, neither one of these images is going to lead to much compression. In this case, we would have one black followed by one white, followed by one black, followed by one white, and so on. In this one, the color changes on every pixel. So we're gonna have no compression. In fact, the file is gonna get a lot bigger as we saw in the first example. So we've had a couple of lessons now on binary numbers. We've seen binary used to represent numbers, represent colors, and to represent machine language. So what does this bit sequence represent? Is it the number 65? Could be. Is it the letter A? Could be. Is it the color magenta? Could be. It depends. It actually depends on how that number is used in the computer. Is it in an image file? Is it in a text message? A spreadsheet? Is it part of a machine language code? As these examples, I hope, show you, it's all bits and how you interpret a sequence of bits depends on how that sequence is used.